Okay, I'm going to walk you through how to attack our essential skills problem. Um, I'm over there, but okay, that's okay. Second screen. Doesn't look like I'm looking at the screen. So um, this kind of walks you through the order. And so um, fill in the missing, fill in the blanks, fill in the missing percentages inside and out. So probably what would end up happening is um, you would be given a an actual starting number. So let's say the um, the number we're going to give you on the inside is going to be something like 70% per salt. And on the outside, we'll say um, that it's, let's say, 25% salt. Okay, so what you're going to do is the way you're going to start it, I'm going to go change back to red. So what we're going to do is um, you're going to fill in the blanks in this order. So you're going to fill in the missing percentages inside and out. So the total water has to be um, 100 percent. So 70 plus 30 gives you 100. So the red is going to represent like what you would do. So I got 30 percent water and 70 percent salt. On the outside, I've got 75 percent water and 25 percent salt. That's the first thing you're going to do. We just go, okay, let me look at my percentages. The second thing you do is you're going to fill in this blank, hyper, hypo, or isotonic solution. So solution on the outside, what we're looking at is we're looking at the salt. So is it more salty to make it tonic? Is it more salty outside than inside, or is it less salty, or is it same salty? Right. So in this case, it's less salty. And so less salty, hypo means under. If it was more salty outside, it would be hyper. So this one is hypo because it is um, it is actually that looks a weird a weird why it is hypotonic. Um, it is less salty outside. Okay. So from there, what we're going to do is three of these arrows are going to represent um, the movement of the solutes. In this case, uh, the movement of salt. And then one arrow is going to represent, and these are the arrows, and then one arrow is going to represent um, the movement of water. So one is going to be the movement of water. Okay. So the first one says, which one is osmosis? So osmosis is the movement of water. So now let's look at the movement of water. It's 30% inside and 75% outside. So the water in this case is going to want to move into the cell. It's going from high to low for water. So which one? A, B, C, or D by simple osmosis. So it's going to go into the cell. So this one is going to be simple osmosis because the water is going to go from a, a percentage of water. And so osmosis is water, remember. you got to make sure that you know that osmosis is the movement of water. And so the water is going to be 30% on the inside. Now, you don't technically have to write this, this 30%, because I'm just showing you. And it's 75% outside. I'm showing you that so that you can see that um, it's going high to low. That's naturally high to low for water. Okay, moving on. That's osmosis. Now on to four. Simple diffusion of salt. So simple diffusion of salt, so it can't be this one because it's already doing that. Now salt and water will go the opposite direction. Um, this is not simple diffusion because it's a, a, using a protein. And this is not simple diffusion because it's using a protein. Diffusion and osmosis have got to be one of these, and we already chose osmosis for that one. So simple diffusion must be that one. It's simple diffusion of salt. And so if you look at the salt, the salt is actually 70% inside. And outside, it's 25%. And this is the salt and inside and outside. And this is salt. And so this is going to be simple diffusion of salt. And it's not super easy to write with my um, pad, so my writing doesn't look great. But you could type it, too. Simple diffusion of salt. Okay, moving down, facilitated diffusion. So if you look at this little line here, these three are all forms of a certain type of transport. So we have uh, osmosis, simple diffusion, and facilitated diffusion. These are all a type of transport called passive transport. And passive transport is always high to low. It's always high um, concentration to low concentration. So look at this is 75 to 30. That's awesome. That's passive transport diffusion of water called osmosis. This is 70 to 25. 
uh, passive transport, simple diffusion, and salt. So which one of these is, is, gonna, is also going to be, remember, three of these are going to be salt, right? So three of these areas are salt, and only one is water. We already got the water one done. Check, right? So we got one salt done. That's this one. We got two more salt ones. So which one is going to be facilitated diffusion, which is a form of passive transport? So we still want to go high to low for salt. Which one of these is high to low for salt? Like we said, it's 70% inside, which is going to be the same here, 70% inside. Outside, the salt is 25%. So outside, the salt is 25% on this one. And it's also 25% on this one because we're talking about salt. So this is also 25%. So which one of these two, A or B, is going high to low, right? This one is going from 70 to 25. That's high to low. So that is going to be facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion means that it is being helped by a protein to go faster. Facil, no, that's um, facilitated diffusion. It's going to be helped, facilitated by a protein but it's still passive transport. So passive transport is this example. In fact, all the first three are all passive transport. They're all going high to low. This one's high to low for salt. This one's high to low for water. This one's high to low for salt. And um, lastly, uh, oh yeah, next. we I was gonna go into active transport, but I can't go on the next. So facilitated diffusion goes to what kind of protein? And this is called a channel protein. Sometimes you could call it a carrier protein. It really, they're very similar. So this is called a channel protein because a channel protein just kind of helps it go through, but it doesn't do um, active transport. Okay, now we're moving to active transport. Active transport is gonna have to um, use a protein pump. And it doesn't ask here, but we know that, um, I don't like that U, we know that a protein pump is going to require ATP, right? And so protein pump, it's got to be this last one, right? It's going the wrong direction. Active transport is going the wrong direction. So this one is active transport. And active transport literally means that you have to make it do this. It doesn't. It's not naturally going to do this, and so um, that's really what it means. And so, in order to make it do that, what you're going to do is you are going to use ATP. And so, there's the energy molecule ATP being used here to make it go the wrong direction. Da da da. And so, it's going from low to high. Okay, and we're almost done. So last couple things is what is letter E? Well, letter E has these little things sticking out the top. These right here are uh, like a little ID. Like if you're going to go to the movie and um, it's rated R, you're going to have to have an ID. They're not going to let you in. If you're going to go to a PG-13 movie, right? If you're not there with your parents and you're trying to get in and you're younger than 13, they're not going to let you in, right? So this is an ID. If you're going to check out a book at the library, they're going to want to see your ID, right? So a cell also has an ID. Just um, the, It's the way that your immune system identifies stuff. It's the way your immune system can tell you have coronavirus. Your immune system goes, hey, you've got a virus here because it can read the ID. It also knows what cells are your cells, which is good. Um, so anyway, that ID is E is called a marker protein. And it, a marker protein means um, it just marks who you are. It's called a marker protein, and because it's called a marker protein because it identifies the cell. Because it identifies the cell as yours or foreign or something else. So that's what a marker protein does. It identifies the cell as yours or foreign or whatever. I mean, sometimes it, it'll attack like peanuts with, or carrots. You don't want it to do that. Okay. And the last one is this thing here, F. What's happening there? Well, in this case, let's just say this is a hormone. And the hormone is telling the body, specifically this cell, the hormone is telling this cell, hey, do something. Hey, we need, we need to get something done here. 
And so the hormone is in your blood and it travels around and it just kind of alerts. It's kind of like, uh, it's like Paul Revere riding through town, right? And say the British are coming, the British are coming, right? So the hormone's coming in. It's saying, hey, get the work, man, get the work. We need some stuff getting done here. So F is actually a receptor protein. And the receptor protein is like your television antenna or it's like your antenna on your phone. And it is going to receive information from the outside and it can tell your phone what to do. So a receptor is like an antenna. And so F is a receptor protein because it relays a message to the inside of the cell because it relays information. And the, the Y's come out weird, Relay, relays information into the cell or inside the cell. And that is pretty much it. Um, so what you're going to do is I've already done this for you, right? So you're going to practice it on your own and see if you can give it back. Relays information inside. And I, I'm out of room here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say inside the cell. And I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that arrow inside the cell. Okay. So, um, and that's what you're gonna do. And so, what you're gonna do is you're going to see if you can follow these exact same steps. You can make up your own numbers because on the tests, I'll have numbers for you. Make sure that one side is higher than the other, right? So um, you can't have identical numbers. Remember, these numbers here, they need to add up to 100. And these numbers here, they need to add up to 100. But you don't want to use the same exact numbers inside and outside, right? I have 70 and 30 and 75 and 25. You could use 60 and 40. You could use 80 and 20. You could use 95 and 5 anything that adds up to 100 inside and out. Then, after you fill those missing percentages, then you go for that, and this will tell you whether water is going to go in or out. And so that will lead you to that. Once you've got the osmosis done, then you've got to figure out your other three arrows. And it's if you follow this order, it'll work just like this. You'll find osmosis first, then simple diffusion, then facilitate diffu diffusion, then active transport. Now, let me tell you, if you change your numbers, your these might not be the same, right? They might switch. So if you change your numbers, these might switch. And on the test, you won't know which one I'm going to give you, right? These could also switch on the test, right? You don't know because you don't know what numbers I'm going to give you, right? Now, these are never going to switch, right? If it, has a, if it has a thing sticking out the top, it's a receptor, sorry, it's a marker protein. If it's receiving information, it's a receptor protein. But these can switch, and they will switch, and they'll be the exact opposite. So a lot of times on a test, you'll see students get it wrong, and they'll get everything opposite. So they'll get every single thing wrong and because everything is opposite. So um, do it on your own. Do your own. And once you um, figure out how to do this and you, can, and you just own it, then um, I'm quite sure that you'll do um, amazing on the test. So um, let's see if you can do one of those um, today in class and uh, make your own video and submit that today, okay?